My name is Ryan Gokenauer. I'm Noah Bertelson. And this is Midwest Outdoor Chasers bringing you the first episode of Primal Plate. Today, we're gonna to be cooking some liver and onions. A lot of people are really intimidated by liver, but you don't really need to be. It's actually really good if you can get past the fact that it's liver, and it's super good for you, full of all kinds of vitamins and minerals. A lot of people have had beef liver, and they don't like it. I would say the flavor between beef and venison liver is a lot different. Venison liver, especially if it's from a young animal, can be sweet and really quite good. If you have someone you know who's a liver skeptic, I'd feed them deer liver before I'd feed them beef. Yeah, I'm pretty stoked. I've never had deer liver before. I've only had beef and it was pretty strong flavored. So I'm pretty stoked for this deer liver. So with the liver, you want to kind of get rid of all this kind of yucky stuff. All those like veins and stuff that that's no good. You want to slice it thin. You should go for like quarter inch or so slices. Oh, it just smells like deer. Yeah, it has a strong Yeah, smell. it does. And then we'll soak it overnight in some lemon water or you can use buttermilk and that'll take some of that out. Yeah, that smells exactly like when you cut it, op cut it open for the first time <laughs> after it got hung. Like yeah. it's let it sit for a day and the first time you go to skin it, that's exactly what that smells like. The texture too, like it's not like meat texture. It's like- Is it leathery? No, it's, it's really kind of hard to describe. It's like one solid texture throughout versus like with a chunk of meat, like it's got layers and like liver is just kind of it just it's there just one thing throughout especially when it's cooked is it tough at all with a younger deer like what we're going to be eating it shouldn't be i, I suppose with an older animal i try not to save older livers because they're just not as good or i'll use them for catfish bait oh okay uh, all right so once you get all that cut up you just toss it in a bowl this is just a salad bowl because it's what i had handy just put enough water to cover it and then i just take some lemon juice and I don't really have a set amount, just plenty. And then let that sit in the fridge for several hours, if not overnight. So this liver has been soaking overnight and you can see how much blood has come out of it into the lemon water. So we're just gonna go give that a quick rinse. I'm gonna cheat a little bit and use this uh, strainer just to make my life a little easier. And this isn't rocket science, just try and rinse some of that lemon water off of there. It's not, not a big deal if you don't feel like you get it all, just a quick dousing. So once that's rinsed, then you just set it on a paper towel here to try to get it somewhat dry. Whenever you're cooking with any type of meat, you want it dry before you cook with it because you're you know frying or grilling it typically, you're not boiling it. And if you leave it wet, that's what you're doing, you're boiling it. You don't get that nice brown caramelization and then we're gonna hit them with some salt and pepper. Liver is a complete food source. You could live off just liver, right? I believe, I heard that. From all the classes that we took in school with nutrition, they said the liver was the first thing eaten. Yeah. And normally it was eaten, sometimes they said back in the day it was eaten raw, straight out of the animal, just because it, that then you lose no nutrients. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but other times they'd save it and either pickle it or, or do some kind of preservation of it just to keep it for winter months when you know you don't have any fruits and vegetables and your you know rations and stuff are low. Well if you ever come across a dead deer you you always see that the whatever's eating it went right for the guts because yeah, that's the where the pile. best stuff is. I like to use red onion I don't really know why for no other reason than aesthetic sake. My grandma who's in her 80s and taught me a lot about cooking I asked her for some tips on making liver and onions, and she said, use a lot of onion. So we're gonna go ahead and use three from the garden here. They're a little smaller than what you get at the store, but I, I think they're a little better personally. So what I do here is a healthy amount of bacon grease, which is an essential oil at my house. <laughs> we always save our bacon grease because it goes great with wild game because wild game is so lean. And it's really the best thing to fry liver and onions and in my opinion you could probably do butter or any sort of cooking oil but uh, bacon grease is always going to be my favorite so we'll let that get nice and melted and then uh, throw everything in that, sounds good. that smells like sunday mornings right there the onions will actually take a little longer to cook than the liver so we'll go ahead and toss them in first i do not like an undercooked onion 
so I'd rather have it overdone. That's, that's me personally with onions. Some people like a little bit more crunchy. In reality, these won't take very long to cook at all. You want it nice and pink in the middle. Probably won't be able to fit all of them in here. You hit it with nothing other than just salt, pepper, and bacon grease. Yeah. First time I had it, I read about it, and I'm like, I'm gonna try that. I shot this good-sized dough, preparing this liver, and you can smell that fart, sulfur smell. And I'm like, man, I don't know about this. I did it exactly like was in the cookbook. And I ate that first bite and it was, it was almost like I was back to the moment that I killed and gutted that deer, but I could just taste the forest coming through that deer. You think about the diet a deer has where it eats like nuts and different plants and it does eat some corn, so you can't really claim it to be pure organic, but it eats a lot more varied diet versus beef, which eats, especially not grass-fed beef, eats only whatever they're feeding it, corn. So it's just, it's missing a lot of the nutrients. Now you think about 150 year old oak tree that's dropping acorns. How many nutrients is that thing getting from like deep down in the earth? No kidding. That's dropping in those acorns and that deer eats that and it gets into the deer's flesh and especially into the liver. And you can kind of see how it started to cup a little bit. That's a good sign. That means it's, your pan is hot enough and it's cooking. And it, it's really just a sear that you get on these. You can kind of see some of the, the blood coming back up out of the liver there. That's good. If that stops happening, you've overcooked it. You see right there, especially with that piece, just all that blood coming out of there. That's not quite ready. That's still pretty, pretty rare in the middle there. So you can see it's still pink in the middle, but not raw by any means. That's exactly what you want. If it's all tan or brown, then you've gone too far. So we're gonna go ahead and scoop all this deliciousness off of there. Well, I like to get a little bit of onion in with my, my liver and then just dig in. Some onion. I, it's pretty good, I think, but I'm interested in, in your thoughts. That's right, like, that ain't anything like I've ever eaten before. Yeah, it's totally different. And the texture, it's like hard to describe. It's like a, it's also like a hard rubber that gives. That doesn't make any. That doesn't make any <laughs> that's sense. That's a good way. That's a good but way to. Yeah, it's like it's rubbery when you chew, but it it almost crunches, and it's not overpowering. I mean, it's liver. There's definitely liver, but that bacon grease in there and the onion that comes with it, man, that's that's yummy. I but, can. I get the heartiness of it though. I mean, it's not. I don't know. That's hard to explain too. It's. It's filling. I mean, just a couple bites in and you're mm. already, you know, it, it. It's a heavy meal. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. It doesn't taste anything like it smells either, which is crazy because deer meat, it, it tastes, tastes like, like it smells. It smells. Yeah. This is like 10 times the smell of deer meat yeah. and it doesn't have any of the, the venison flavor to it at all. So this was episode one of Primal Plate brought to you by Midwest Outdoor Chasers. Noah whipped up some bomb ass liver and onions. Totally fantastic. First time I'd ever had deer liver before. I could honestly say I'll probably be eating this almost every season because that was fantastic. Yeah, how many of those did you leave out in the woods? Too many. I, I feel bad that the coyotes got those yeah. now, you know. <laughs> it was it was fantastic. I mean, it wasn't gamey at all. It's It's got a bad stigma. I mean, I, personally, I could say that I had a bad stigma against it. I didn't want to, yeah. I want to admit it, but. If you can get mentally past the fact that it's an organ, it's a delicious meal. Yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, super easy to make. I think all in, with, other than the time it took just to, to sit overnight, I mean, it probably took 10, 15 yeah, minutes. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's really a quick meal if you can yeah. plan ahead. Super cheap, easy way to feed your family. Anyways, if you like this, feel free to like and subscribe and stay tuned for more. Yep. Episode two coming soon.